All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today, we're continuing concepts and principles with B17, distinguish between motivating operations and stimulus control. Now that we've covered each individually, we're going to try to identify the key differences between the two antecedents that we use in our contingencies. And this can be a little tricky because you could argue that in many cases, a motivating operation is also related to our discriminative stimuli. Because when we think of stimulus control, we're trying to think of our SDs or discriminative stimuli. And motivating operations have a tendency to temporarily also evoke behavior. So when we talk about B17, we wanna be very technical and very specific. And an idea is, and the idea is to understand the key concepts that separates the two. And then when we get to practice, or let's say a question on the exam, we can start to break down antecedents to identify those characteristics that distinguish the MOs from the SDs. So make sure before we get to B17, you understand MOs, you understand stimulus control, because that's gonna be key to this topic. As always, Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. Please subscribe if you haven't already for all of our video updates. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. Quick recap on MOs and stimulus control. Remember, our four term contingencies look like MO, SD, behavior, consequence. So this is your typical three-term contingency, and now we have an additional motivating operation. And what is the main idea behind a motivating operation? What's its main attribute? The main attribute of our MOs is it changes the value of a consequence. Yes, it can evoke and abate behavior, but the key idea is the MO affects the value of this consequence. Stimulus control, on the other hand, is related to our SDs, right? Where we have something that's reliably evoking this behavior. So the first distinction is MO is related more to consequences and the value, while the SD is related more to the behavior. Now it gets tricky, of course, because they're all intertwined with each other. But the first thing you wanna remember, the MO has to do with the value of a consequence, while the SD or stimulus control has much more to do with the behavior. And, the, and stimulus control occurs when that specific antecedent or SD reliably evokes behavior due to past reinforcement. So MOs do not signal reinforcement availability. And this is the key idea we're gonna talk about over and over again. Just because you want something doesn't mean it's available. And then stimulus control occurs in the presence of SDs, which do signal reinforcement availability. So that's the second key idea. MOs, just because they alter the value of a consequence, they do not signal the availability of that consequence. SDs, which is related to stimulus control, actually signal reinforcement availability. Now, MOs change the value of a consequence, which we said is the most important thing to remember. And it alters current frequency of behavior. Current frequency is important here because consequences affect future frequency. Current frequency changes only because the value of a consequence has changed. So if the consequence is established and the consequence gains value, well, then it's more likely behavior is to occur to gain that consequence. So it's making you want or not want something. But like we said, you can want something or not want something but it's not available. Not until there's an SD does it say that the consequence is actually available. Right now, if I want a box of donuts, for instance, well, there's no donuts in my house or near me, so just because the motivation may be there to eat the donuts, there's no SD signaling the availability. And just because the consequence is altered, it might alter the current frequency of a behavior that's been known to go find that consequence. So for example, after a hard workout, you crave carbohydrates like I am right now. The motivation is high for carbohydrates. 
but it does not mean carbohydrates are available. So the MO is present, but until there is an SD, can I actually obtain those carbohydrates? So this has done what? It's increased the value of carbs. So now I may try to engage in behavior that will find me those carbohydrates. Stimulus control is when behavior tends to occur more in the presence of an antecedent. So stimulus control occurs when an antecedent reliably evokes behavior. And that key, the key word here is reliably. In order for stimulus control to be present, that behavior has to happen over and over again and predictably in the presence of an SD. So when we have an SD, we can predict what? We can predict this behavior is going to happen. Why? Because in the past, that behavior has led to this consequence. And this forms this little loop where we have an SD or a stimulus, evokes a behavior, behavior is reinforced in the presence of the stimulus, and on and on we go. So behavior is evoked due to a previous history of reinforcement. Behavior is reliably evoked, so predictably, in the presence of an SD. The value of the consequence has not changed. Remember, our MOs are changing the value of the consequence. The value of this consequence hasn't changed. The reason there's stimulus control is because this consequence has been delivered in the presence of that stimulus in the past. So for example, we have a Viore ad that says swimsuits back in stock. So you go visit the website. What has the ad done? Well, it's signaled to you that swimsuits are now available. It evokes a behavior that has been reinforced in the past by responding to the ad. The value of the swimsuits have not necessarily changed, right? Maybe you've been looking for swimsuits this whole time. You wanted a Viore swimsuit, they were out of stock. The value of those swimsuits haven't changed. Only thing that's changed is this antecedent stimulus that is now telling you the swimsuits are available. So let's sum that up, right? Remember, we have an MO, we have an SD, we have a behavior, and we have a consequence. The MO alters the value of this, which can temporarily change behavior. The SD reliably evokes this. Why? Because in the presence of this stimulus, this behavior has been reinforced, which creates our loop. The SD signals availability. The MO makes you want or not want something. So just like you can want something and not have it available, it can be available and maybe you don't want it as bad. So motivating operations, it changes the value of a consequence. Stimulus control with our SD changes availability of a consequence. And I think that's the key here. It's value versus availability. What it affects, motivating operations, motivation to engage in behavior. Are you going to want to or not want to? The SD or the stimulus control increases the likelihood. So you might have motivation but if it's not available, you're not going to engage in a behavior. So the key effect is our motivating operations increase or decrease reinforcer effectiveness, while stimulus control evokes behavior due to past reinforcement history. So for example, thirst increases the value of water, but not until do we see an SD that's signaling water is available can we actually get that water. So when we see a water fountain, that's going to evoke drinking behavior. So thirst is our MO. We see the water fountain, SD. Fountain evokes drinking behavior. What happens? We get water. So in the presence of the water fountain, we continue to drink. And why? Well, in this case, thirst increased the value of water. So that's really the key ideas, right? Remember those key concepts of why or what demonstrates the difference between the two, the motivating operation and the stimulus control. Motivating operation changes value. Stimulus control signals availability. Just because the value has changed does not mean availability has changed. And that's very, very, very important. As always, check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard, 